Good morning, everybody. I'm reading all of your comments beforehand, and it sounds like a lot of you are cold. <laughs> it was raining all night last night, but it did not freeze last night. It's 37 degrees. So even though it's cold and misty and foggy and rainy, at least the streets are not slick. Sunday night, the streets were terribly slick. My son, he did fine all the way home from his job downtown Oklahoma City to where he lives out here in Yukon. But in entering his neighborhood, you have to kind of go up and then kind of back down. And he had a hard time getting up. And then when he got down, he like slid right past their house. <laughs> But luckily, there wasn't any cars around or anything, and he got home safely. But I tell you what, you know, we lived in Colorado for 12 years, and we had tons of snow, but we just don't get, didn't get the ice that we get down here in Oklahoma. And I had forgotten about all that ice that we get. And that ice, that black ice is so scary because the pavement's black and the ice is, is on there, and you cannot see it. And that is scary. So, thank God everybody got home safe. <laughs> they didn't have anyone come into work yesterday. My husband went, of course. Make sure all books and payroll and everything's fine. But he came home early and he said the roads were fine. So, that's good. <laughs> I know a lot of people are tired of the winter and the rain. But we've only had it a couple of, you know, a couple of weeks here. So, I'm okay with that. I But I do sort of miss just the snow, you know. I wish we could just get the snow. Yes, my hair is crazy today. Okay. <laughs> Taking the dogs outside in the rain. My hair is super straight. <clears throat> if I have curl in my hair, it's because I actually put it there. <laughs> and so my hair was crazy. So I just plopped it up on my head. It's all straight and it kind of sticking out. And of course, my gray hairs are all wiry today. <laughs> It's okay. We're going to have a great day, okay? Which kind of reminds me, the other day when I was leaving Walmart, I had a whole buggy full of things. And, you know, they stop you. You check yourself out at the checkout. Then they stop you and make sure you did it right, you know? Well, I've, I'm trying really hard because my theme for the year is others. And so I'm trying to remember that the sweet lady at the door is just doing her job. And so I was being really nice to her and everything. But when I left, she said, well, I hope you have the day that you deserve. And I thought, well, that was kind of rude. And then I realized this, I deserve a good day. And we all do. <laughs> so, but I thought that was an odd thing to say. Anyway, you all are going to have the day you deserve because you're all a really, really great bunch of people. Okay. <laughs> I just thought that was so weird. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> let's get started with the yarny fun. The first thing we need to do, of course, is to clink in. Clinkity, clink, clink. And that's just saying, hello, I'm here, and what you drinking today? <laughs> well, that's why we call it Coffee and Crochet with Sarah. We like to get our coffee or whatever we're drinking. We sit down, and for 30 minutes, we just chat and have a good time. It's all about... Putting aside all the cares of the world for 30 minutes and having fun with yarn and yarny friends. <laughs> so clinkity, clink, clink, clink. I just filled my coffee up. I, I didn't realize that I had drank all of it. <laughs> and I went to get a sip and I was like, oh, I better go fill it up before we start. <laughs> well, I'm just drinking good old Folgers today with a little bit of sugar-free vanilla syrup in it. It's really yummy. I've been kind of, um, I wasn't perfectly good with, with my, um, the, I don't know if it's really a diet. It's the lifestyle I have to live now since I'm diabetic and have some other issues. And so through Christmas, I struggled a little bit and I did put on a little weight. Um, not a lot, just a few pounds. And so what I'm doing now is trying to get myself back together because I have to go to the doctor this week. <laughs> I know he's going to weigh me. <laughs> it's okay. I don't care. <laughs> They're really nice there. <laughs> So 
anyway, I wanted to show you something. I my went uh my granddaughter was here and we were playing in what I call the grand girl room. It's my spare bedroom. We have a big toy box in there. And we were digging through the toy box and she loves to play dog rescue. And I have a whole lot of stuffed animals and stuffed dogs and a lot of stuffed chihuahuas through the years that people have given me. Um, and so she found these two and I have to show you these. This is a crochet replica of Maximo and Rosie. My daughter who also crochets, she didn't, she used a pattern online. I don't know which one it was because this was like 12 years ago. But she made these for me. Aren't they adorable? They're well loved by my grandkids. But I thought I'd show them to you. I'm sure I showed them two years ago. But isn't that the cutest thing? It's a Maximo and Rosie in crochet. <laughs> and they're well loved by my grandkids as they love them. I thought I would show them to you since we found them. I, I forgot about them. They were in the bottom of the toy box. Now they're out back out here in my crochet room. Okay, so we do have a lot to talk about, but one thing I wanted to start doing on our live videos is going back to doing shout outs to other crochet and craft bl uh, blogs or YouTube channels or blogs or YouTube channels that have blogs or either way. I wanted to do some more shout outs. I did this a few years ago and I really loved it. And what it does is it helps us find other people who love crochet as much as we do and have YouTube channels, okay? And so I was looking through some of my stuff because I, I take notes when I'm on YouTube or when I'm on Facebook or Instagram or, or on um, the, I call it Twitter X because I don't really know what it is, <laughs> you know, because I have a business account there as well. And when I see one come up that I haven't seen before, I'll write it down and go look for it later. Well, this one I found and I just really love her. She's so sweet and very well at explaining patterns. All right. So I want you to go and look for this person. Um, her name is April Garwood and she has a YouTube channel called Banana Moon crochet and I think you will really enjoy it I want you to go and, and check it out um, she could use some subscribers too and I think you'll really like her she's got some really nice patterns and she's just really sweet and I love the way that she um, talks through her patterns and things and I think you'll really like this YouTube channel so I wanted to just do a shout out um, banana moon crochet and the young lady that um, has the channel is called April Garwood. Now, I am going to put her link. It's already there underneath this video in the description box. Right underneath it, it'll, it'll, it has her, name, her, her YouTube channel and the link so you can go and find it, okay? So, anyway. Oh, Jenny says she it's 335 in Tasmania. A.M. 3.35 a.m. She's having trouble sleeping. Well, I hope I don't put you to sleep. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. <laughs> That's super cool. That's so cool. I did see there was one person. Um, I wrote it down. Kathy Pearson. This is her first time being with us. So welcome. Um, and if I look to the side, you don't know what I'm doing. All of the comments that you all are making, I have streaming on this side because I have a big wide screen and I have half with what I'm doing and half with what's going on on YouTube. Just so you know, if I glance over to the side here, I'm looking at all your comments. I'm trying to keep up. They go by so fast sometimes I can't, but I'll try. All right. All righty. So I wanted to give that shout out. Banana Moon Crochet. And the young lady's name is April Garwood. Please go and check out her YouTube channel, okay? And I'm going to try to do this again because I really love doing it. Because you all know my feelings. I don't believe that we crochet um, uh, channel that we're in competition with each other. I don't feel that way at all. I feel like we're, we're family. And that we need to encourage one another and be each other's greatest cheerleaders. That's what I think. Of course, we all know. It's just my opinion. <laughs> all right. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is our yarn of the week. And what our yarn of the week is, is this. Got a string hanging out there. This is Sweet Roll DK from Premier Yarn. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come over here to our other camera here so you can see it better. I've already started working with it. It's absolutely gorgeous. 
Isn't that pretty, these colors? And this is what it looks like. This is Sweet Roll Premier from uh, DK from Premier. It has 541 yards, which is 4.9 ounces. All right, now it's called DK. Light three, 100% acrylic, and then it gives you all your washing instructions. And also, something to remember, when you go to these, you, these yarn channels, or these yarn sites, they always have free patterns and inspiration. I like that. I, Red Heart has it. Um, Yarn Inspirations has it, and Premier has it, and a lot of the other ones have, and that's because they want you to see patterns worked up with their yarn, okay? And I think this is absolutely gorgeous. It's called Aurora, and it does remind me of the Aurora Borealis. Isn't that beautiful? And this is how it looks. I started with the dark pink and moved my way down as the yarn float, of course. And this is a shawl I'm working on. It'll be ready this spring, because remember I told you, I do things three, four, five months in advance in order to have it ready for the season, okay? And I've already used this much of it, you can see. And I got two, because I want to have enough to make a nice big shawl, all right? And you can find the link to Premier Yarns also in that description box underneath my underneath our video okay and I wanted to choose this particular yarn because it is DK and the reason that I wanted to choose this particular yarn for this week as I get questions all the time what is DK what does DK mean to you know what what is it you know um, you can still find patterns on yarn labels Lisa but but not very often a lot of times they put them out on those little um, sheets. See, Sylvia says, what is DK? Well, we're going to talk about that right now. Okay, so what I did is I, I went on an, in, an investigative thing. And we always say DK is a number three. It isn't always. And that's how in America we sort of <clears throat> uh, compare it with is a, a, a light three. Okay, so let me uh, read to you what I found the information. Okay, what is DK yarn? According to the Yarn Council of America, DK, which means double knitting, weight yarn is equivalent to a light three. And we do say that on the standard yarn weight system. One thing to remember, and this is something that I, that I um, have learned crocheting for many, many, many many years is just because someone says it's a light three or it's categories as say a medium weight four that doesn't mean that they're all going to be the same size there's wiggle room within those weights okay and we're going to talk about the yarn weights in just a second okay the other thing i found on one of my friend's blogs it says why is it called dk or what does double knitting weight mean okay and this is what she put on her blog this is because it usually is equivalent to holding two strands of fingering weight or super fine yarn, which is a one weight together. And that's where the name come from, double knitting. And of course, this all was because people were knitting more than crocheting at the time. And that's why it's called double knitting. It's two strands of, of a light number one or super fine yarn. Okay, now it says, some people say, and this is just some people, <laughs> some people say that DK is thicker than a light three, but not as thick as a medium weight four. And I have found this in different, in different categories of yarns. And it also uh, depends on if it's an acrylic or a cotton. You know, those things can change because you've, you know, you've bought yarn um, that says, you know, medium four and it's been fuzzy and you're like, nah, that's more like a four and a half or a five. And there is no half sizes. I just called that. Okay. And then we bought yarns that we think, oh, this says it's a three weight and it's like a one, you know, cause it's so super fine. And so it just depends on who makes it and the, the, the type of fiber it's made out of and also how it's spun, you know, how tightly it's spun. Okay, so, <clears throat> and again, this all really depends on who made it and the brand of yarn 
that made it. I do want to show you something real quick. I've got this simple yarn weight chart. I'm going to move this back. Then we'll go back over here. And this is a simple yarn weight chart. I'm going to hold it up a little closer so you can see it. And we also now have an eight that's that super jumbo thick, thick yarn. Okay, so a zero is a lace fingering 10 count crochet thread. Okay, then we have a one sock fingering baby yarns. A two is considered a sport or baby. In America, a lot of times a sport weight will be considered a three weight. And that's interesting. And, and again, that has to do manufacturers put them in different categories. Okay. So then we have the light, which they call a DK light or worsted. And that has to do with how it's made. Then we have the medium four, which is a worsted, Afghan, or Aran. Again, depends on the manufacturer. Then we have bulky, which is chunky. A lot of times craft or rug yarns will be chunky. We have our super bulky which of course is super bulky and then roving. And then our jumbo is also considered a roving, but we do have our, what we call that super bulky jumbo. It, and it's an eight now, and that's that big, thick, um, and almost, I should have grabbed one because I've got one up on my counter. It should, it, it almost looks like it's been pre-crocheted or pre-knit into the big, thick stuff. Okay, and this is a chart that's on my website, but you can also just search Google and come up with lots of different charts, okay? But I wanted you to understand, when something is called a DK in America, in, or say England, um, we usually put that in a category of a light three. But sometimes if you're buying yarn, because I buy yarn that comes from Greeks, Greece sometimes, or from, um, I even had some that my husband brought me back from, um, um, now I forgot all of a sudden. I want to say Norway, but I don't think that's right. Um, but anyway, that was not even close to what ours was. I bought some beautiful yarn when we went on our Alaskan cruise that um, is very expensive. It's beautiful. But they categorized it a little higher than what the thread, in my opinion, was. And so when you have a chart like this, also know that there's wiggle room between those and it really just depends on the manufacturer the brand if it's going to be true to size okay so the bottom line is this and of course i'm just speaking about here in america because i know yarn companies and other places do things differently um that dk means double knit and that's when you hold two strands of your fingering weight, which is a one weight, together. And that's where that came from. But usually category, DK is a three weight yarn. But don't get frustrated or disappointed if it's not. Okay? I have a DK um, that from the same company that has two different cakes of yarn that are supposed to be DK weight or three weight, and they're not the same at all. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, not, they're not the same at all. My hair's driving me crazy. I'm sorry I keep messing with it. But they're not. And you look at it, and one looks like it could be a light one, you know, and the other one looks like it could almost be a four weight. So just keep that in mind when you're buying yarn, you know, and... Um, just don't let those kinds of things frustrate you. I, I, I get emails about this all the time. I bought this weight yarn. It's not that. I bought this weight yarn. It's too thick. It's too small, you know. And so, and, and another thing is when you're buying from people who, who weave their own yarn, I don't know if you've ever watched this. It is just an incredible thing to me. There's a couple of people on YouTube that show you the process from taking it off of a animal, like an alpaca or sheep and how they shear them and they shear them very gently. You don't have to worry about that. Um, and it shows the process of washing the wool and spinning it into yarn and dyeing it and all of that. It's really, really interesting. And I, I really think you should go and look at some of those. Just put in how to, how to weave yarn or how to spin yarn and watch these people do it. It is just an amazing thing. But when you're spinning it by hand, yes, they know what they're doing and they do their very best at getting it right. But 
yarn is yarn, especially when you're getting it from a sheep and they're doing that spin and trying to get it perfect. So I guess what I'm saying is yarn is not a perfect yard, art. And a lot of yarn that we get, even from companies like Premier or Red Heart or Yarnspirations, it's all done on machines. And those have to be set and tested and made sure they're running properly and things like that all the time. And so if it be, if you get some that's a little thinner or a little thicker, don't, don't let that frustrate you. Just change your hook size. <laughs> Or maybe change what you were gonna make. It's just, it's just one of those things, okay? And 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 I I think they do their very best at getting it perfect and right. But you know, they're people, <laughs> and people are not perfect. Believe me, I know I'm not. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> I just wanted. I, I get so many questions about this. Why is it called DK? And what is the weight? And how do we, you know? And so, and I, I um. A lot of people really prefer medium weight number four and so i've done my most of majority of my patterns in that but i love all weights of yarn i like the the little skinny stuff too and it's hard on me because i do have arthritis in my uh, fingers my crochet hand especially in my thumb but it's not going to stop me i just won't use it as often for longer periods of time but even when you crochet with some of the really thick yarns and you have to use a much bigger crochet hook, like our chunky one that's behind me, I used a, a 10 millimeter crochet hook and that's a big crochet hook. My thumb, oh my goodness, I had to do it in small time periods of time because my thumb was hurting like crazy. Okay, so as my mom used to say bottom line it sarah because <laughs> i talk too much the bottom line is this dk weight is basically three weight okay which is your light yarn and i like using it it's fun it's pretty and of course this is our yarn of the week sweet roll dk this color is called aurora it's absolutely gorgeous if you want to see the other colors let me look on here. There's 12 different colors. It's 100% acrylic. You're getting um, 541 yards on a, on a cake. And that comes out to, let's see, 4.9 ounces. And this is a DK three weight. And this one is really true to size, by the way. I have really enjoyed making it. I'll click back over here for a second so you can see the shawl that I'm working on. It's really gorgeous. Look how pretty that yarn works up. Isn't that gorgeous? It's just beautiful. And I, I really, I really like working with it. <clears throat> and I think, I think you will too. Just, and if you want to just see it and see all the colors, hit that link that says Premier Yarn on it, and it'll take you right to the Premier Yarn website. Okay. Now, if you want to, um, Look at the yarns at the cross the top. There's tabs. It'll say yarn. It'll say clearance. It'll say sale. You know. But if you want to see this one, just just click the yarn and it has categories. It'll have D, DK weight. Just go there and this will show up. Their 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 website is super easy to use. I love it when it's super easy to use. I was on another website which I'm not very happy with. I'm not going to say their name because they sent my yarn to the wrong place and I'm still waiting on it. <laughs> <laughs> but their their website's really confusing to use. And I think that when a website is confusing to use, I don't want to use it, <laughs> you know. But because I could only get this particular yarn I was looking for from this website at the time, I ordered it. And they sent it to my house in Colorado, okay. So I haven't lived there for almost two years. Why they sent it there, I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I still it has still hasn't shown up yet back over here so I don't know anywho I'm not gonna worry about it I got so many other things to worry about <laughs> all righty let's talk about what crochet patterns we did this week now just a reminder the crochet patterns that I put out here on my YouTube are my designs and so they're my patterns and each one of them has a written pattern with pictures or photos in a video tutorial, all right? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is this blanket that's behind me. Now, remember I told you Rosie, my little Rosie Belle, she's over there sound asleep. Um, she jumped off the bed and hurt her back, 
And then she also had a little ha a hand, a little paw infection. And so she had to have a little surgery. Well, I took their blanket that she loves with me because I wanted her to feel comfortable. I do this thing where I warm it up in the dryer and then, I, and then I wrap it around both the dogs and they just sit in there and cuddle. Well, when I took her to the vet to have her little surgery, when they were all done, they brought Rosie out and then she handed me a bag and she goes, Rosie did good. Her blanket did not, <laughs> and I guess she had a horrible accident. <laughs> she does that when she's nervous. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to throw it away. I've had it forever. And so um, it went in the trash at the vet. <laughs> and so I made this beautiful new scrap happy chunky blanket. Isn't this gorgeous? I love this blanket. This one measures approximately 36 by 36. I did the square which is called uh, C2C or corner to corner. Now, one thing about this stitch is it has made a, re in, uh, a repopularity insurgent or whatever you call it. It's become popular again. Years ago, when I first learned it, about 40 years ago, it was called the crazy stitch because it was on a vertical. And then someone decided they would call it the vertical block stitch. And, but today we know it as the C2C or corner to corner. And the reality is any crochet stitch can be stitched corner to corner. And the reason it's called that is because, let me show you the corner. We start with the corner and we go crosswise. And then once we get it as wide as we want, then we decrease down. It's a super easy blanket and I absolutely love it. And this is their new blanket. Now I set it on the couch. They both jumped up on it and sat on it, and then Max kind of walked away because Max loves the old blanket, even though it's Rosie's favorite. It's his favorite, too. And so I've been sitting it with them because it has, you know, with dogs, they're all about smell, so it has to get their smell on the blanket. So um, they have another one that's green that's made out of a fuzzy uh, kind of a blanket yarn that I had on hand, and it's green. It's super pretty. Um so I've been putting them together so they can get their smell on it. But they do love it. Rosie already loves it. And one of the things I really liked is how I did the, the trim on this. Is It's just a really simple shell trim. A lot of people don't trim the C2C, but I do. And I love it. And I what I did is I got into my... I'm just going to set it down now. I'm going to ring a little back on my chair but what I did with this particular pattern is I got in my yarn stash and I pulled out all my five weight and six weight yarns and I just started rolling them in balls and then once I got the balls rolled I just went with it whether it was a six a six or a five um, but you can also do this pattern holding two strands of medium weight four together and get about the same size now remember medium four could be thinner or light you know or thicker you know, and the truth is you can do this in a, in a four weight as well. It's just not going to be as big because this is the basic corner to corner or C2C square blanket. I do have plans. I have one that I want to do in a C2C that's going to be a throw that's going to be a more of an open and lacy stitch. And that's a, I have plans for that for this summer because I like to make lightweight, lightweight throws. I like to have them around. They're nice, you know, if you're you're having your car, if you're out at the beach or a park or something, and you just need a little something to throw on. They're kind of nice to have in the car. Um, this one is really nice to have in the car in the winter because if you were some of these people that got stuck in the ice and they couldn't get anywhere, I bet they wish they'd have had a nice big thick blanket like this one because it is thick and warm, and I love it. Oh, thanks, Rita. I try... One of the things, um, she's talking about how she learned the C2C. I did a basic C2C washcloth uh, a couple years ago because I wanted it to be really simple and easy to use. But I tell you what, um, it, it, it's once you get the first like two to three rows going, it's super easy. It really, really is. But the thing that messes people up is they forget they need to kind of flip the end. When I say flip the end, the last stitch has to flip down in order to hook together. But watch the video. It shows you exactly what to do and how to do it, okay? And I hope that you will give the C2C or corner-to-corner -corner 
crochet pattern stitch or crochet stitch pattern a try as it's a beautiful stitch it really really is it's perfect for baby blankets it's perfect for bed blankets it's not just for dogs okay because <laughs> my dogs don't know their dogs okay <laughs> All righty. Well, I want to show you the other thing that we did, and I am going to bring back the other uh, under the other camera because it just makes it a little bit easier. And that is this. Um, it was kind of funny. I posted this, and someone goes, "That's kind of slippery." And I said, "But it has a bottom. <laughs> it's not going anywhere." <laughs> and this is really cool. If you're someone who likes to jog or walk, like I like to walk out in the yard with the dogs, this particular cup is a teacup. This was given to me by a friend for my birthday. It's got, I can do the loose tea, you can see I have. And then you put that in there and then this keeps it, this keeps it hot. And then when you're done, you can take this out and you can put a straw in there. Put my coffee straw in there. And you can sip your tea. Sorry, I had it too far over. Anywho, I do not know where she got this, but it is like my favorite teacup. Anyway, you can do uh, the, a teacup, you can do a can of soda, whatever you wanna put in there. There we go. And then you can walk around the yard. Let me move that metal thing over. And you can walk around, take a walk, take a jog, walk around wherever you want to go, and your hand's going to stay warm. And I can keep my other hand in my pocket. And so I called this the coffee cup <clears throat> and can hand cozy. And it's super easy. And a friend of mine made one in, I think it was San Francisco. I don't watch football or baseball or any of that stuff, so I don't know sports. But she made it in the colors. It was like red, gold, I think, and white. Um, and, she, and gave it to her husband, and he just loved it. Because they were going to the whatever game that was. I'm sorry, I am not into sports, so I don't know the games. But anyway, and it looked really pretty. She's supposed to post it um, or send me a picture so that I can show it to you. One thing you can do, because I this I the band on some people is too big. I like the size of this because I can fit my sleeve inside of it. But you can decrease. Like if you don't want this to be this, you can use some, some uh, double crochet decrease stitches and decrease it down so that the, the, the handle on it is uh, tighter. But it's really an interesting technique because you're making a tube and you bring it around. You sew one side together with slip stitches, or single crochet, sorry. And then you make the cuff, and then you cut, you make the circle, and then you come back in and sew the circle on. And it's really easy. It's not hard at all. And this one I did in double crochet front post, so you have a nice texture. And it's a really fun project. When I, I mean, I think it's a great gift to give to somebody, maybe for their birthday. Buy them their favorite coffee, or their favorite drink, or their favorite soda. And, you know, or maybe find them a nice cup. You know those expensive cups everybody's getting? I want—I can't remember the name of it. You could fit that in there but and keep your hand warm and still hold your cup. The only thing about those is they're really tall, so you may have to leave the bottom off. <laughs> you can put a cup in here that has a handle on it. When you put it in, make sure the handle is here. And you can hold that handle right here. Let me see if I can get this. There we go. You can hold the handle here. Even though the handle doesn't come out, you can hold it here and still hold your cup and your cozy as well. Because I tried it. I should show you with my coffee mug, but it's full. And I don't want to slide it in there with it being full because I just filled it up <laughs> as I drank all my coffee. <laughs> Well, it looks like we're after 11. I do want to let you know on Friday, for Friday Fun Day, we are going to do a bead project. And I'm going to be using fake pearls. Oh, I'm sorry. We're supposed to call them faux pearls. <laughs> Remember those pearls I showed you the other day? I'm going to be using some of those. So you might dig in your bead stash and get some beads out. <clears throat> we're going to make some hearts and just have some fun. Just a fun beaded you know, Valentine's Day gift that you can make for anybody. It doesn't have to be your beau or your girlfriend or boyfriend or anything like that. It can be friends and family just to tell people that you love them. Because <laughs> we do. We need to let our friends, friends and family know we love them. Okay, let me check. See, oh, I forgot to tell you about our this and that video. If you go to the YouTube channel, which all these patterns, like I said, and this video I'm getting ready to talk about, 
The link to that is underneath this video, okay? <clears throat> so our this and that question for this last week was, do you like to crochet and add beads to your projects? And I really was impressed with your answers. It was everything from, no, I don't care for them, to I've never tried it, and yes, I love it. So that gave me, you know, um, I, lo I love having your opinions. It's good, it's good for me. I learn from it, and then I kind of know what you're looking for. Okay, and so tomorrow I have a new video coming out um, <clears throat> that is a this and that. I've got to finish editing and get it ready um, for tomorrow. And I tried, like I said before, I, I try to get the this and that video out on Wednesday between like 7 and 8 in the morning <clears throat> because I usually have it done and then I'll schedule it um, by Monday night or Tuesday night. This is Tuesday. <laughs> by Tuesday night. So anyway, um, I really appreciate you commenting on, the, on those videos as well as all my videos. I do read your comments. I really try to <clears throat> at least heart your comments. Um, yes, it was the 49er, Sylvia. That was the colors that she did. <laughs> I saw your hearts, and then, I, and then you put 49ers. <clears throat> that was for the mug cozy. Those were the colors. I think she did white, too, besides the red and the gold. Anywho, <laughs> I, I saw your comment, and I got sidetracked. Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> I really, really, really thank you and appreciate you for commenting on everything on my videos and I do try really hard to answer all of the comments it, it's not easy because I get a lot and I have to shuffle through because I get a lot of odd ones also um, sometimes I don't sometimes I get comments I think maybe they don't they put them on the wrong video or something because I don't know what they're asking <laughs> or, or there's you know language or something but anyway most of that stuff gets filtered out Anywho, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching my videos, for commenting. And as I always say, there's my heart. Let's see if I can get this right. <laughs> I can't do this without you. I can't. And I don't want to do it without all of you because you guys make it so much fun. And you bring such joy. And um, I, even these comments here as I read them, I just, I just enjoy it. And I'm sorry, sometimes they, these comments go really fast. And I please forgive me if I don't see it or if you have a question and I don't see it. If I don't see it, ask it again. <clears throat> okay? And you can put, look, you didn't see it. Here's my question. <laughs> you know? So anyway, I'm going to let you go with that. I want you to have a fantastic week because that is the week that you deserve. Okay? All right. I'll see you next time.